So James, I just have a few questions for you. I would like to learn a little bit more about Present Movement and a little bit more about yourself and what it is that you're offering. Um, so could you tell me a little bit more about what your background is? So my personal background is actually, I've actually got a military background. So I actually spent sort of seven years in the British forces. And then since then, I went straight into the fitness industry on the gym floor at a classic Ronnie Mill gym and spent six years there just trying to help the average person get fitter and healthier. And then from there, I've worked in studios and now I've got my own studio to the stage now. It's, it's 10 years now in the fitness industry, which has flown by. Um, but since that journey or that journey I've been on, I've learned a lot of skills along the way and I've seen a lot of problems along the way as well. And one big problem I've seen with a lot of people I've worked with has been sort of injuries and pain. Now, it's just been a blocking factor and it's been a blocking factor to them getting results in the gym. It's been a blocking factor maybe for fat loss or muscle gain or just people just want to feel happier and healthier, which sometimes that's what people want. They want to use exercise as a vehicle to having a better quality of life. So my background has been working with a diverse sort of client base, I suppose, over the last 10 years with loads of different problems. But it's allowed me to try and not only get better at my job through lots of educational courses, learning about specifically movement, a little bit about injury, and a lot about pain as well. Over this time, I've developed a skill set where I'm able to serve my clients better, and now actually at the stage where I want to help other trainers develop the knowledge to serve their clients better as well. Mm. I have to say that everyone I speak to has some sort of pain or niggle or something that is going on in the body. It seems to be that everyone this in this day and age has has pain so it's fantastic that you're able to to offer this to people and that you're so knowledgeable about it well i think i think that's it isn't it it's the fact that it's just so common so it's something that we see time and time again so it's not like someone experiencing pain or a bit of their body's aching or feeling stiff or just not moving that well it's not as if this is something that's quite rare this is something that's really really common it affects everyone it affects everyone and we look at the most personal trainers they're training the the average person on the street and how does the average person move you know we think about movement as being quite advanced sometimes about all the stuff that we can do as a trainer but what does the average person do what how does the average person move what's the average person what are their problems and we know pain and stiffness is just so common and it's probably going to get more and more common so we just need to develop an understanding of what might be impacting these kind of clients and what kind of skills as personal trainers we need to develop and we can get better at understanding so we can help these people a little bit better. Yeah, and really help them with you know their day-to-day -day life and their day-to-day -day movement. So could, could you tell me more about then what, what present movement is all about, what present movement offers? So present movement, first of all, is geared towards helping personal trainers. And specifically, we're looking at the skill set with what we've just been talking about. It's a skill set of understanding a little bit about pain. Pain is incredibly complex, but I think if we can kind of peel the layers back a little bit, we can start to make it a little bit simpler for not just trainers to understand, but for their clients to understand as well. So present movement's here to give a little bit of a, a stronger foundation of understanding pain, but then understanding movement and how maybe the average person might move how the average person who's experiencing a little bit of pain and stiffness might move, and how we can develop the skill set to not just help them move better, but maybe help support them with the pain that they're in, or maybe kind of ultimately improve their quality of life. And it's not saying we're going to cure someone necessarily, but if we can develop the skills to, I suppose, allow people to realize they can still move in so many ways, even if they're experiencing pain. That can be really, really powerful. And I think it's something we need to talk about more because it's, it's something that is affecting so many people. More people now than ever are experiencing chronic pain. It might be lower back, it might be neck, it might be shoulders, knees, wherever in the body, chronic pain is such a big issue. And yes, we've got some fantastic therapists out there who we can work alongside, physios and osteos. But as a personal trainer, we are spending a lot of time with these people. 
They might see us for an hour a week, two hours, maybe three hours a week. So in such a good place to be able to help these people. So I think the, the, the question I like to ask a lot of trainers if I'm mentoring them is to say, what do we do with these people if they are experiencing a bit of pain? Do we just refer out as soon as someone feels a bit of pain and stiffness? If we did that, then most of our clients would be referred out all the time. I guess the other issue that personal trainers um, might feel that is if they don't have much knowledge about pain and, and how it works, they may feel that actually they haven't got the skill set to deal with it. So instead of encouraging that person to keep moving and to keep doing things, do you find that they then perhaps turn around to their client and just tell them to do nothing instead? Um, you know, would you consider that to be an issue? Because I think a, a lot of clients may feel that actually movement is bad for them um, if they are experiencing pain, when actually in reality they really need to do be moving and, and working the muscles and working into the joints. Yeah. Um, do you think there is a, a fear factor both massively. from the client and from the person? Massively, massively, 100%. Yeah, I think there's a massive fear factor there. Uh, I remember when I first started training people and someone would come to me with a, a bit of pain Sometimes it'd just be something they just felt within a session, a certain movement. Sometimes it might be because they had injury in the past. Loads of factors. But it's quite scary as a trainer for someone to go, I've got some pain. And you don't know whether you're making them worse, you're making them better. We kind of know that movement's good. But how do we, first of all, understand its power? So we need to understand the why behind what we're doing. So most people, trainers, will understand that movement is key to improving someone's health. But how can it help someone in pain? What's the why? I think we need more of a why, more of an understanding about maybe the brain, especially the brain. That's a big uh, focus of present movement is understanding the brain, how that works in conjunction with movement and pain. And that will allow us essentially to have more confidence, to make better decisions. And that's a really important thing, to make better decisions because if we don't have the right background and the foundation of knowledge behind what we're doing, our decision making is going to be flawed somewhere along the line. So if you can get a better background and foundation of understanding a bit more about movement, working with the average person off the street who might be experiencing pain, then our decision making is going to be better. Also our confidence is going to be increased and that will have a knock on effect to the person we're working with. Because it's really, really important that we are confident in how we deliver our information. And that confidence will only come from education mm. because it's really scary for the trainer and the client potentially if, if neither has any understanding behind pain and movement and injury. If there's nothing there, you just go with what someone's told you 10 years ago and it's a scary place to be. So ultimately it's trying to not just only make people feel more comfortable and confident, it's trying to sort out this gray area. Because what we've got is a massive gray area. So we've got people who have experienced injury and pain in the past. That's a lot of people. Those people may want to get back to exercise, get back to training, get back to getting fitter and healthier. But there's this big blocking factor there. And that's the fact that every time they get back to moving, their lower back flares up again, or their knee gets bad again. So as trainers, we are going to come across this. So we have to think, well, how can I understand a bit more about not just pain, but also how to tweak movement and how to make movement person-centered so this person isn't constantly getting a flare up all the time. And that's one big part of present movement is to understand some of these kind of, um, some of these kind of cases so we can deliver our service better.